All right, we're back with our first recording for a bit with Pioneer Hammer Time. We're doing some games I've previously played, kind of showing how the deck plays against a little bit stiffer competition than we did in the last video. Uh, taking a look at the opening hand. Click, click, click. We've got a couple hammers, a chemo to equip it, a fire blade charger. Seems like everything we want in an opening hand. Uh, we're up against a Yorion deck. It looks like they might be uh, fires or something. We play Fireblade Charger, pass. Plays to our opponent, who plays, shocks in, plays Nylea's Presence. We play Sigarda's Aid, and presumably a Hammer next turn. Bash them for 11, force them to answer either the Hammer or the Fireblade Charger. Point goes to seven here. Pass turn. Shocks in, plays a Deputy of Detention, taking away our creature. We go ahead and draw another Fireblade Charger, play that, play Kemba, equipping the hammer to that, forcing them to yet answer yet another thing while still having a, yet a third hammer in our hand. Pass to our opponent. Opponent's going to take something special to get out of this situation. They go, shock in. Play fire or an incarnation. Sack for Nylea's presence. Presumably go get okay Sky Sovereign. Sure. Go ahead. Attack with the Fire Blade Charger. They have to block because if we have a hammer, they're dead. They block. We equip hammer. Have a second. Fireblade Charger now. Play Nahiri, because why not? Opponent plays Destiny Spinner. They're forced to attack because of Nahiri's ability. They sacrifice Destiny Spinner for Knight of Autumn. We then draw, what, our third copy of Hammer here? Opponent blocks. We equip the one that is not blocked, and they die. Sigarda's Aid can be a screwed up magic card sometimes. Looks like I brought in two copies of God's Willing for one open the armory out. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I boarded up to 61, which was probably not smart, but I do just really want the protection elements. Um, as far as our opening hand, we see Fireblade Charger open the armory, Sigarda's Aid. So we have something to put the hammer on, something to find the hammer, a way to equip it. Seems like a pretty reasonable hand. Our opponent's probably going to keep a high interactive hand, so maybe a little bit hard to navigate this. Uh, we play Fireblade Charger, which may have been incorrect. It's possible we should have played out either Sigarda's Aid or Rabbit Battery here. Rabbit Battery. Um, we play out Open the Armory, find Colossus Hammer. Okay, opponent does the thing. Passes to us. We play a Cacophony Scamp. And holding up God's Willing here may have been incorrect. Probably should have just played out Sigarda's Aid and Rabbit Battery, maybe. Opponent's got the Portable Hole. We God's Willing. We left a Scamp on top. And our opponent does nothing. So we play the Sigarda's Aid. We go to combat and hit, try to hit them for lethal. And our opponent apparently has a Leyline Binding which we could have played around. So being a little bit overly aggressive with this, I should remember that in these situations you force your opponent to react first instead of doing what we did. Opponent has Chain to the Rocks. They have Deputy Detention for Sigarda's Aid. So now we have a whole bunch of stuff that with nothing, no hammer to equip it with. We play Fireblade Charger and pass. Opponent has an Ilea's presence to draw them another card. Finds, puts Urion in their hand, has another land. Okay. We attack. Opponent does nothing. We play the other Fireblade Charger. Obviously, a little bit risky as they're going to play Urion and potentially can blink the Deputy of Detention. But. Oh, and Portable Hole. So. 
Probably not correct to play out multiple copies of the same thing. So they give us the Garda's aid back. However, our deputy comes in, presumably takes our fire blade chargers. Okay. Deputies take the chargers, that takes that. We draw another cigar to Zade. We just play Kemba. Equip it with the rabbit battery. And pass. Bitter reunion with card discard. They pitch a fable. Which I guess they're just looking for interaction more than blockers at this point. We find that. We play Nahiri, although Nahiri's not the best in this situation. Probably pitching what? Cigar does aid? Nope, Resolute Strike. Okay, opponent does the thing. Attacks us with Yuri on here. Puts us to, or no, I guess they kill Nahiri. And they're going to have Glass Pull Mimic for Deputy Detention, so we scoop it up. All right, back for the third game. We're on the play, which is obviously nice. Well, in the first hand, this hand can't keep because of the lack of colored mana. This hand has everything we want, so this is a keep, putting back with the two sacred foundries. Probably should have held on to Mutavault um, just to have as another threat. Although I guess we do need the, the colored mana for fight fighter class, so. Obviously not the best to mulligan, but this deck doesn't have the resilience of the modern version, so you're kind of looking for all your combo pieces in your opening hand, or at least ways to find them. So we just play fighter class here. Go get our hammer. Opponent plays that, so another, okay, bitter reunion here. Pitching Chain of the Rocks, that's kind of terrifying. Okay, and we play fire blade charger. We play hammer out. Alina's presence with a chain of the rocks. Play Kemba, equipping hammer. Opponent plays what incarnation, and then just to start getting their toolboxes to blow our stuff up. So even though fire's enigmatic incarnation is a bit of a slow deck, it still has what it needs to kind of win in this situation, so. And this was a screw up here. Um, I meant to play Sculpt Mull the Skyclaves pre combat because I thought for some reason that it had flash, but it doesn't. So I could have hit my opponent for an additional two. Um, now they get to sack Nylea's presence, copy Skyclave, and now we have no creature. So this is where maybe having Mutavolt would have been helpful, but, you know, Fighter. Create fighter class, which doesn't do a whole lot for Colossus Hammer, but still it's something to do with our mana. opponent has got Cavalier of the Dawn to blow up our thing, gives us a body, which is fine, I guess. But then they just get Elish Norn. And Fireblade Charger. All the Skyclaves does nothing when it comes into play. So what I could have done is I could have Resolute Striked. Uh, the hammer onto Fireblade Charger and swung with an 11 11, but I don't think it's going to matter here. And then our opponent just has kind of overwhelming advantage at this point. So, called to see Elish Norn in action and uh, kind of got owned by removal, which sadly what I kind of expect with this deck, but you know, it is still fun to try to play around what your opponent's got and try to get them dead. And once again, it doesn't have the resilience of the modern version, but still a powerful deck and threatens, kind of forces your opponent to play in a very defensive way. And if they don't have a very specific set of tools, then they can just die out of nowhere. So, all right, on to the next match. All right, back for a second match against Termo Guy. We are on the play. Our opening hand. We have Kemba and a hammer, so I'm pretty sure this is a keep. Swift Blade Vindicator, a little bit awkward with the mana, but. We just play Hammer on one, play Kembo, and force them to uh, deal with an 11 11. Or, yeah. And we're up against Rakdos, so not the easiest matchup in the world, but. Okay, they do nothing, sure. We have all the hammers in the world. 
They have power word kill. We play fire bird, play charger, and another hammer. They stomp our guy. So they kill everything we've got. We hit them with a mutable and like it. They've got a bank buster. They are stuck on lands, which could be interesting. We play Nahiri, take it up, pitching the other Nahiri. Which is kind of dumb because if they have something to crew bank buster, then they just get to kill it. But they take Swift Blade Vindicator. Once again, looks like they're holding up mana here. Pitching land, drawing another land. No reason really to fire into a mutable here, simply because removal spell and we suddenly have no threat. Um, opponent. We get Fighter Class going, and getting another thing. We choose Mold of Skyclaves, which could or could be correct or incorrect here. Uh, could also have been possible to grab uh, um, Shadow Spear. So we're probably going to find ourselves in a racing situation here shortly. Though our opponent is playing very, very, very defensively. Okay, they just have Stomp for Kemba. So the opponent's been holding up mana the entire time. Okay, their Fable is going to flip. Yep. And then apparently this is the point where I can see it because we're just too far behind. All right, we're back for game number two. Looking at sideboarding, we bring in looks like one of two of the Nahiris and something for fighter class. Looks like we just brought in two Nahiris for one of the smaller Nahiris in fighter class. Don't know whether that's correct or not. Once again, this the sideboard of this deck was fairly experimental but I want to play at least which is nice only getting that hand to get to this hand which has no way to get a hammer so this hand has a hammer but no lands so we're going to four here uh, this hand has everything but a hammer so I think we're gonna have to keep it um, keeping fire blade charger Sakarda's aid and hoping to get a little bit lucky here well, it's got nothing. We draw a Swift Blade Vindicator, which is not terrible. We still need to draw. Well, we draw a hammer. Don't play it here because our opponent obviously <clears throat> could play a removal spell, which they do. We get to put it on the Swift Blade Vindicator. And now our opponent has to deal with a Bone Crusher Giant. And they're dead because of our 11 11 Double Striker. So, you know. So I guess the moral of the story is when playing this deck, you need to learn to be more patient. Um, that's always something I've struggled with when I played uh, similar style decks, whether it be Modern Hammer, Modern Infect, is I have to remember, unlike the mentality with something like Burn, you need to be a little bit more patient and force your opponent to react and then smack them in the face with a big hammer. Um... But, yep, yeah, on to game number three. Can we steal a win against Rakdos? All right, game number three against Rakdos. Keeping this hand seems like a bit of a risk, but we're missing a way to find Hammer, but we do, I guess, have everything else. Plus, I suppose Nahiri allows us to dig towards a Hammer if they're not kind of dictating how the game's going. Opponent doesn't have a Thought Seize, which I find interesting. Cigar does a go. Could have played Fireblade Charger there, I suppose, but opponent's just going to hold up in removal. We play Fireblade Charger. They play Fatal Push, which is whatever. Opponent taps out, which is obviously always risky. But we play a Scamp. I should have played an Open the Armory there. I'm not honestly sure why I didn't. Um, I guess the thought process is if our opponent taps out again, then they might die. But it doesn't seem exceptionally likely. Okay, so we play open the armory, grab a Colossus Hammer, attack. We don't want to attack, which 
Okay, power word kill. We do the hammer. This forces them to take 11 to the face because scamp does scamp things. Feels like our opponent's really pulling ahead at this point. Um, they're definitely doing Rakdos things. They even have a Shieldred. Get to hold up removal spells. I guess they don't have removal spells. So we play Kemba. Kemba steals a hammer. All right, pass to our opponent. How can we find a way out of this one? Especially when our opponent has double reflection of Kiki Jiki going. Okay, so with Blade Vindicator is not a terrible draw, especially. Okay, we just do Fighter Class. Oh, that's how we're gonna get out of it. Shadow Spear, swing. Swing, bada bada, swing, bada bada, swing, bada bada, swing. Swing, bada bada, swing, bada bada, swing, bada bada, swing. Okay, so my opponent puts their entire board in front of it. Uh, we play Shadow Spear and kill most of their entire board. So. Opponent does a stomp to the face. We're at 24. I guess with Swift Blade Vindicator and other things going here, we have a chance to just. Actually, no. Univolt. Never mind. Okay, we just play Vindicator and pass. Opponent does Extinction Event on even. They're really nervous about dying here, it seems. Play Fighter Class, getting another hammer. Again, our opponent feels like they're feeding us way too much time. Feels like they should be at least moderately more aggressive. Like, I respect them being careful, but it does feel like they're just being a little too cautious. Okay, Nahiri creates 1-1s one that do things. When it kills Nahiri. We swing, they make a copy. We go ahead and hammer it up. Resolute Strike, the Shadow Spear, and our opponent dies. So, kind of incredible to get there against Rakdos. That feels like it should be probably by far the deck's worst matchup, but a win against the top deck in the format when you're a deck that is weak to removal spells seems pretty good. All right, we're back for the third match with Hammer Time. Taking a look at first opening hand. Really can't keep this. We have a hammer, maybe we can consider with a Scardis Aid Cacophony Scamp. Um, this hand has no hammer. That said, with Nahiri, maybe we're supposed to consider keeping it, but we're here to combo, right? So, open the armory, Cacophony Scamp, Fireblade Charger. Uh, we have ways to find hammer, but no way to equip it, so it's possible, especially on fire, that we should have uh, kept this hand, but I do believe we mulligan it. Go to this hand, can't keep it. This hand, three lander, basically what we looked at on five, but you know, less resources. So keep a fire blade charger, a colossus hammer, and a land. Looks like we might be up against blue whites. No reason to play anything out here. Um, obviously, you could get like fire blade charger down and start trying to beat down, but this is blue white control. Come on. Need to kind of get a situation maybe where you draw like a bunch of lands, a Sigarda's aid, um, or we just play out the hammer here, which our opponent maybe should have countered if they had access to it, although there's no guarantee they had absorb. But now we have this situation set up where we can potentially hit our opponent for 11 here. Um, you know, if they ever tap low for something like a Teferi or something. So just keep playing our lands out. Got to play the waiting game against blue white control. Whole lot of Drago do nothing. Just keep going. They're at discard at this point, so no reason to play into it. 
They put the Lay Down Arms, which is an interesting card. Uh, our opponent goes for Memory Deluge on instep here. Goes back up to eight, now back up to nine. They draw a land. They play Teferi. Teferi takes up. So this might be our opening to potentially take a chance. Um, place the Garda's Aid kind of as a bait here. They veto it, you know, kind of had the green light to hit them for 11. Uh, actually, I guess 13 with Resolute Strike. We could potentially take out the Fairy, but I just don't think that's a winning game. I think we have to do this and hope they either make a mistake and wrath us or don't have some way to exile, which most of Blue White's removal these days, other than Supreme Verdict, is um, exile based. You know, whether it be March of Other Will Be Light, Lay Down Arms. Uh, portable hole, uh, leyline binding if they're you know, running a clunkier mana base, etc. Although that tends to be more of a modern thing. And really, Swift Blade Vindicator would play this out as a threat, but you know, at this point, we're just losing the game. So, on to game number two. All right, take a look at sideboarding. We board out a couple of resolute strikes and open the armory for presumably some God's Willings and the Nahiris. Looks like boarded up to 61 again, which I've got to stop doing that. <laughs> um, the sand, we've got everything we want, so it's definitely a keep. You have the scamp, the way to find the hammer, and all that fun stuff, as well as a kemba as a way to re-equip the hammer, should our opponent find a way to deal with this. And we just, you know, draw a hammer and can kill them on turn two, so that works. Sometimes you just got to nail them. And then Scamp, sacrifice it to deal them 11 to the face. And sometimes your opponent never plays a spell. All right, back for game three. Take a look at our opener. We see land, Mutavolt, Scamp, Hammer. I think this hand is keepable. Uh, we don't have a way to equip Hammer, but I think against a deck like Blue-White Control, you might want to keep this hand. Past me agrees with myself, so... They play Lay Down Arms. We play the Scamp, which, once again, a little bit risky. Could play it with uh, God's Willing Backup. Uh, potentially, we should have given what we did, but play down Sigarda's Aid here. So, opponent has a Field of Ruin, which is obviously annoying, but kind of whatever. <clears throat> Go ahead and play out Nahiri. Hopefully, they only have, like... Whatever, and it just resolves, so we get rid of Resolute Strike. Play this after our Mutavolt. We have no basics in our deck, which now that our opponent knows that, they might more aggressively uh, go after us. But I possibly should have gone for it here. Um, though we would have gotten blown out by the. No, I guess with the Wondering Emperor, we could have potentially killed them. Well, we can't kill them because it is Fireblade Charger, so. Opponent has Dovin's Veto here. So, tapped out of all our white mana like an idiot. Which means we are infinitely vulnerable here. And here he goes goodbye. They just keep picking dudes. We play Fighter Class. They Dovin's Veto. Kind of get the picture. Um, you know, we could continue to try to play this game. You know, we have a God's Willing, maybe we're supposed to keep playing this game, maybe I got a little bit impatient, but patience is the name of the game. Um, I think with this deck you really need to kind of put your opponent in a situation where they either get overconfident or make a mistake. Um, it's kind of like Modern In Fact, or even the older versions of uh, Hammer Time in Modern before Luris. Um, or I should say before Urza Saga, where you have this pseudo grindy plan or a plan against grindy decks, but the reality is you just try to set up these situations where you either try to overwhelm your opponent's mana or you just, you know, wait for them to make that one small mistake and slip through and smack them for 11. So, um, certainly something I have to train myself if I'm going to continue working on this deck, but, you know, we got to see some games. We beat Rakdos. Uh, we stole a game for, or stole a game to, or game two on turn two from Blue White Control, so the deck has reasonable, 
reasonabilities. Uh, we'll talk about the rest in the wrap. So I think the big takeaway on a couple of things is one, I missed Screeve to have another one drop to play. Um, the grinding plan, the, the sideboard clearly needs some work. Uh, this was another list that had done well. Um, one card that was interesting was uh, Swiftblade Vindicator. Um, you know, kind of contributed to us kind of destroying uh, Rakdos that one game. Um, other cards you consider, you could consider for kind of grindier matchups. You could play things like uh, Danto Vanguard. You could play things like um, uh, what do you call it? The three one. Uh, the king you can give indestructible to uh, season hollow blade. Um, obviously, you're kind of limited because you really want uh, warriors, which swift blade vindicator doesn't. Uh, neither does I don't think vanguard or season hollow blade. Um, Ginger brute is an interesting one that can slip through, but unlike um, the Mockner and Hammer Time, you don't have Urza Saga to go find you. You're one of Ginger Brute, so I find that inclusion interesting. Really, I, I just lack, really didn't like the lack of Screeve in this list. I think game one, you really kind of want to be as linear as possible. Um, you know, get as many one drop creatures, uh, maybe some protection spells in the main deck. Uh, you know, Shadow Spear and Maul, the Skyclaves aren't terrible alternative things and then I think game one you just want to be as linear as possible and then game two and game three you know have your sideboard options of things like the here of the ancients etc um you know the plus one being able to make tokens you can attach your equipment to etc all is quite nice but I really think that the takeaway is you really kind of miss Screeve in this particular list I'm not sure I think when I when I downloaded this list um I didn't realize that Screeve wasn't in the list so but uh yeah Hammer shows some promise. Um, the overall league went one and four, so the, the, the results weren't great. But um, as you saw in some of these games, you know, you have to learn to sneak through that pile of removal. And, you know, if, if you're a modern Hammer player, maybe you have a little bit more experience with something like that. Um, if you're also working on the deck, don't forget to comment down below how your list is going. And uh, if you want to continue to see some Hammer content every now and again, uh, with us checking in on how the deck's doing with some of the latest builds, don't forget to comment that down as well. And if you like this kind of pioneer content, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hope to see you for the next video.